think one of the biggest secrets to wealth and ongoing wealth and sustainable wealth is you must continue to learn. And most people never start their own thing. They get the mortgage, the car payment, and they got the bills and they stay in the job. And they never reach into themselves and find another level. I want to learn from somebody who's doing what it is I want to do. Just getting a mind shift change around the way you look at money and the way you define words such as debt can make a huge difference. Good debt is debt that you borrow, for example, on rental properties for businesses that actually makes you money. What is it I look for in a, in a business and how do I identify great opportunity? I made mistakes along the way. I had some major issues that we ran into. I said, I need to share some of these problems that I've already uncovered so that other people don't have these same problems. How in the world do we make money when things drop? For the real estate investors, it's not about real estate, it's about the dollar. If you ask me where the US dollar is gonna go in 30 years, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. Well, if you can borrow that, when it's worth something, trade it for some real estate, and then give it back to the bank over 30 years, that's a shorting of the dollar. And so that's a foreign idea to most people. If you borrow money and you can invest it at a higher return, create productivity, make your money back and pay back the debt, that's just fine. Manage it well and invest it well. And there's nothing wrong with debt. Most of the so-called money supply isn't money, it's credit. Last year, over six million Americans started a company, 50% of them will fail inside of one year. The first advice I would give to anybody that wants to get into business is, is don't start a business, actually buy one that someone else has built. We started out with four franchisees and we ended up with 42 locations. Wow. Most people come to me and they want something lifestyle oriented. The widget doesn't matter, the service doesn't matter, but it's the lifestyle that that business can create for them. I built a company, sold it, made millions, and lost everything four times in a row over 10 years. And so finally I said to myself, well, what worked for me on the way up each time? And what was I doing wrong on the way down? Well, I was looking around for ways to make money. I started publishing a newsletter. First launch, I did $1,650 in sales. And I had this thought right then, if I did that once, I can do it again and it just didn't stop there. I did $34,000 in a single week. Anyone who's serious about getting started should really think about starting as a service because it's so much easier to get a service off the ground. And then as they experience any level of success, convert that service into a product that then takes them out of the equation. When I launched my first product within four months, I was doing over $100,000 a month profit. Wow. So the bug hit and we started teaching people the Amazon model I found my passion. We're changing people's lives. So by the time I got four properties, I was able to replace the income from my full-time job, and I was working 50 hours a week doing that, down to three or four hours per week just managing my Airbnbs. My dollars per hour went stratospheric. So for somebody that's starting now with nothing and wants to get out of the rat race, I don't know of any faster way to do it. If somebody says they want to do something but they don't ever try, then they're in the same boat as if they failed. I was just like, Okay, I'm just gonna try it out. You know, if it doesn't work, I'll go back to yearly rentals. I was making more in a week than I was in a month, and I was already cash flowing huge. There's such a cloak around Wall Street, the language of Wall Street, the money of Wall Street, um, the fact that trading desks move so much money around the world in nanoseconds all the time that most of the public has no knowledge of, and, and, and most of the public also doesn't even know how it impacts them. Investments are riddled with hidden fees, hidden commissions, non-performing fees, and if you can discover where those are, you can boost your returns substantially. If you had 100 grand over 30 years, that 100 grand could grow to 1.74 million at 10%. At 9.2%, it grows to 1.4 million. That's $340,000 from what seem to be inconsequential costs. The IRS is a big bully. Is it your opinion that the majority of people right now are overpaying in their taxes? Absolutely. They're not always aware of the intricacies of the tax code. And they're certainly not aware of the exceptions and the, the different ways that those things could be classified. I went from a saver to an investor. Yeah. I have seven or eight mechanisms going all at once that are producing wealth for me. And my job is to, how can I do what I love all the time and have money coming in regardless? I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing in the world in relation to money because my money beliefs were messed up. This awakening shifted something in me. We went from a quarter million a month to a million a month. 
in eight months flat. Very often, breakthroughs come from breakdowns. Everyone's saying, you know, follow your passion. And it's like 99% of the people on the planet have no idea what their passion is. And you just start working. And all of a sudden, you bump into something that you're either really good at or starts to become successful. And then that becomes your passion.